Um, we're having a couple of technical difficulties, but I see some new work. I don't know. Well, Brandon came to the rescue. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I, I touched the computer this morning. <laughs> um, our announcements for this morning, uh, short and sweet. Um, announcement number one, it looks like we'll be dreaming of a brown Christmas. Um, which is kind of interesting that last year at the very time, uh, we were going to the church and doing a lot of digging and snow blowing, and this year is the polar opposite. Uh, we have absolutely no snow out there, so I have now experienced both uh, UP winters, uh, so, so that's awesome. Um, and the only thing I want to mention this morning is, again, our Christmas Eve service uh, for tonight is at 7 o'clock. And uh, kind of combine our, our two messages together. So if you want to actually get to the end of the message that we gave you this morning, you got to come back tonight. <laughs> See how I work. <laughs> Other than that, does anybody else have an announcement that we can share? Then let's uh, go ahead and get our hearts and minds focused on uh, our Savior and celebrating his birth and. Uh, all the great things that, that God has done for us and enjoy the prelude that James got together for us.
We light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Join us, please, in singing hymn number 290 in the Black Book, Faith We Sing, Light the Advent Candle for Person.
Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice, because the sons of judgments of God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil, preserves the lives of the faithful, and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice the Lord, the righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. And our opening gift is on page 218, it came upon the Midnight Clear. Page 218. <laughs>
that uh, of salvation um, that comes through Jesus. And then we celebrate that that birth. Lord, we just ask that you continue to remind our hearts uh, how precious that, that gift is. We pray for all those traveling uh, this weekend, Lord, um, heading out in their cars or on the plane or anywhere they're going, Lord, we just ask for some clear roads and good skies and bring everybody home safely. And Lord, we thank you that Bradley and Brandon are here this morning. Uh, we thank you for uh, computer skills that not all of us have. Uh, Lord, what a blessing to be able to get on a piece of electronic equipment like that and, uh, and, and take care of business. Uh, we, we thank you, Lord, for those skills. Um, we thank you, Lord, for that, that gift of technology uh, that, that helps get the word out there uh, about your son. Heavenly Father, we also, as always, come before you with our unspoken prayers. Those prayers in our hearts that we share only with you in that quiet time that we pray. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to give us the strength and the faith that we need so we can know that we can place all things in your hands and you will take care of them in your way and in your time and to your glory. Here is this morning also, Heavenly Father, as we Pray the prayer of Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our hearts as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation.
However, there are still bright ones left back there for tonight. So if anybody is feeling the itch to read scripture tonight, feel free. Um, otherwise, you have to listen to me again tonight. <laughs> so our Old Testament reading this morning is from 2 Samuel, verse 7, I'm sorry, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and verse 16. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Now it came about when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within ten curtains. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But in the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go, and tell, and say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, even in a tabernacle. Wherever I have gone with all the sons of Israel, did I speak the word with one of the tribes of Israel, which I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. I will also appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, that they may live in their own place, and not be disturbed again. Nor will the wicked afflict them any more, as formerly, even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and I will give you the rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. And our epistle reading is from Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, which is uh, the benediction to the book of Romans. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages past, but now is manifested and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been made known to all the nations, leading to obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to the glory forever. Amen.
Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. If you are able, you lift your eyes for the gospel reading. And this is the story of Gabriel announcing Christ's birth uh, to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and for that reason the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth, has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in thy sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, we are jumping around this week to Luke's Gospel uh, on our, our fourth Sunday of Advent and our combined uh, Christmas Eve coming, you know, tonight as well, um, as we approach the, the celebration of our Lord and Savior's birth. Um, we are looking to Luke's gospel tonight as well. Uh, we'll be continuing the story. Um, while I was thinking about this story, as, you know, all through Advent, we're kind of building up to this, and, and I was thinking about it as I was trying to work on this part here, I was thinking about the stress of Christmas, um, especially this year. We've got a whole different kind of stress uh, for this Christmas. Um, but can you imagine the, the stress level that Mary had on Christmas? She received perhaps the, the biggest Christmas surprise uh, ever. Uh, in history, uh, a surprise that changed the entire world, the entire human history was changed by what the angel told her was coming. And that's what I want to look at this morning. Uh, I'd like to look at uh, Mary's response to that to that great surprise, um, which comes in the form of a question. A question that has remained part of the Christmas story, one of the most important parts of the Christmas story, but it's remained part of that Christmas story even today. Um, I had touched on the fact that uh, probably a week or so ago, I know I mentioned how the Gospels all differ as to how they describe Jesus coming onto the scene. Um, Matthew introduces Jesus uh, by giving um, Joseph's genealogy. Um, John uh, last week we talked about John. He kind of takes us back to eternity past. And um, 
so that you can't come to the wrong decision that Jesus' life began at his birth. Uh, John leaves no question that, that Jesus was always with God, that he is God. He was their creation. He was created through him, for him. So he was there. He's always been. Um, <coughs> the book of Mark, uh, he begins his gospel by um, presenting Jesus' credentials through John the Baptist at, at Jesus' baptism. Um, and Luke also has a genealogy in the beginning as well, but that's through uh, Mary's line. This is how uh, that, that, that gospel begins. But Luke also begins by recording Gabriel's announcement to Mary. The announcement of Jesus coming to birth. So let's take a look at Mary for a second. It's at least it's what we know from what the Bible tells us. Uh, her father's name was Eli. Uh, her cousin is Elizabeth, uh, mother of John the Baptist. Mary was very young. She didn't come from a wealthy family. She was poor. Uh, she was also a woman of faith, very strong faith. Engaged to be married. That's really about it for Mary. But today's passage has some very extraordinary things to teach us about this woman that God chose to be the mother of our Lord and Savior. So going along with what I just mentioned about Mary, um, kind of a side note, we see again, uh, with, with God choosing Mary, we see this continuing theme through all of Scripture of God choosing people for great things who the world might just reject. Um, so the story of Mary begins in verse 26. Um, now, in the sixth month of the, the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he says to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. So engaged, betrothed, um, pledged, it, it depends on which version of scripture uh, you're looking at this morning. Um, just to touch on the fact, in, in Jewish tradition, that, that stage of the relationship, it was the same as being married. Okay? Um, they were considered married. They would have been referred to as husband and wife. They just would not have lived together at this point. Um, and some folks discounted Mary, and still kind of do, uh, because of her age. Uh, at the time, she couldn't have been more than 20 at this point, uh, which really was not an uncommon age at that point, but she was very young. Again, she wasn't from a wealthy family. You know, simply put, she would have she would have gotten married, had kids, probably never ventured any farther from home except for the fact that her and Joseph and Jesus had to go to Egypt to hide from Herod. Other than that, she probably would have stayed where she was. She simply chose by God to be the mother of our Lord and Savior. So back to our passage real quick. But she was very perplexed at this statement that he had really made to her. He kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. Um, Mary just doesn't know how to respond. How would you respond? How would you respond to uh, if someone you had never met comes in with the craziest thing you ever heard and then tells you it's your lucky day? You might call 911. Uh, what Mary did was Mary stopped to consider uh, what that appearance of Gabriel meant to her and, and what this message that Gabriel might require of her. And we hear in verse 30 
The angel says to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Keep in mind that, you know, how would you respond to this? You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. And Mary says to the angel, How can this be? I'm a virgin. So Mary's having some concern, isn't she? Even though the, the prophecy of the, the Messiah, the coming Christ, is very well known uh, to the Jews, uh, Mary would have known this prophecy. She was a devout Jew. Um, Mary's thinking, me, of all the women out there, you're picking me. So on that note, Just how important is the fact that Jesus is born of a virgin? How important do you think that is? Because there are some so-called, or they call themselves smart people, because um, they got degrees on the wall, that would suggest the virgin birth isn't actually necessary. Basically because they don't want to have to believe it. Uh, because they can't explain it. Which is something we run into quite a bit when it comes to Scripture. We can't always explain it. Um, but the fact is, the Bible clearly teaches the virgin birth of Jesus. So here's where you run into a problem. You can't claim to believe the Bible, but then deny the virgin birth. It doesn't work that way. That's, that kind of inconsistency doesn't work. That's, that's why I call cherry picking the Bible. Um, it doesn't work. People will say, well, oh, I like, I like the sound of John 3.16. That sounds great. Um, so I can go to heaven. But, but all these hard things to believe, I, I don't know. I, I don't like it when Jesus tells me that he's the only way to God. I don't, I don't like that. Uh, or I don't like when the Bible says that I can't live my life any way I want to. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that. I just like the heaven part. That's the part that I like. Um, that's cherry picking the Bible. You don't get to do that. Um, you can't believe in the virgin birth or the resurrection. <laughs> Throw out the window. You don't need it. You don't need the Bible. To, to reject the virgin birth is to deny the divinity of Christ. Okay? And, and reduce him to just another human being. If, if, if Jesus is the son of a, a human father and mother through the usual good old process, um, then he's not God in the human flesh. That's, it's really that simple. And, and he would have had, and he would have been a sinner just like the rest of us. And, and he would have been in need of a savior just like we are. Um, and if Jesus had sins of his own, then he couldn't have died as the substitute for our sins. Uh, and if he didn't die as a substitute for our sins, then we're lost. And we're helpful. So yes, the virgin birth is very important to the Christmas story. Anyway, uh, earlier in the Christmas story, when the, that same angel, uh, Gabriel, uh, shows up and tells uh, Zachariah that he and his wife are going to be a mom and dad, John the Baptist, the messenger of Christ, um, because of Zachariah's unbelief, He requested a sign. You know, he requested some proof. Um, it, he wants some kind of confirming evidence, which doesn't go very well for Zechariah. Um, and we'll talk more about that tonight. So you have to come back. <laughs> so Mary, on the other hand, Mary doesn't ask for proof. Okay? She's simply asking for uh, some clarification um, as to what's expected of her so, so that she can cooperate with God, uh, with God's plan. Um, 
Mary's question, Mary's question stems from faith. The question of Zechariah stems from doubt. And of course, we see, we see through all of this, as we see through all of Scripture, that God isn't limited by what we think is possible. Um, and we see Gabriel's answer uh, to Mary. Very simply, he says, the angel answered, uh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now within her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary says, Behold, now look at So basically, Gabriel says, You want to know how it's going to work? I'm going to tell you. This is how it's going to work. And he reassures her with the fact that even her cousin Elizabeth, uh, who's pushing into her 70s at this point, um, is having a baby also. You know, both pregnancies are, are perfect examples of, of, of uh, human impossibilities, at least in our mind anyway, uh, being made possible through the word and the promise of God. You know, Gabriel's closing comment there really says it. Nothing's impossible with God. The guy can do anything. And, and, and those words are unchanging and absolute even today. Nothing is impossible today. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we're facing in life. Uh, fear, uh, confusion. Uh, maybe you feel like you're just kind of pooped out and tired and just can't go on with life. Or maybe you don't get along with your family. Maybe you can't get over your anger. Maybe you're having a problem forgiving somebody for something. Um, they'll think you'll be loved. They'll never be healthy. They'll never be happy. It doesn't matter. Nothing is impossible for God. And Mary's courage. You, you have got to admire Mary's courage. You know, she may be young, but she's not a wishy-washy airhead at all, is she? Her words in verse 38 confirm that God definitely picked the right lady for the job, uh, to be the mother of our Lord. Um, her response, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord may it be done to me According to your word. Bond slave. Uh, some of the versions I think say maid servant. Either way, it shows how much you trusted God. May it be done to me according to your word. That's some kind of trust. That's that's courage. That's faith. And we can't, we can't underestimate what it cost Mary to say yes to God. You know, Jesus later says in his ministry, count the cost, people. Don't, don't put your hand to the plow and then look back at your former life and start wishing you could go back. Because you will be unfit for the kingdom of heaven. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he says. Count the cost. Look at the cost that Mary had. Um, she didn't get a beautiful wedding. Um, she, is, she is certainly to deal with the up and coming gossip fest that she'd have to deal with as, uh, as she's pregnant before the wedding. You know, all the, all the pointed fingers, all the whispering behind her back, the cost was really high. I'm sure she was wondering. Well, what's Joseph going to say when she tells him the big news? And as far as the law went, remember, you know, Joseph and Mary both are could both Jews. As far as the law went back there, she could have been stoned for being pregnant before their wedding. And with all that in mind, what does she say? May it be done to me according to your word. 
has to be about the bravest woman that's ever walked the planet. So I mentioned it already that Christmas can be a stressful time. Uh, so maybe carrying heavy burdens uh, for some, this Christmas may be a bit more of a lonely year. So make sure we're keeping in touch with those people if you know who they are. Some people are facing financial challenges that might seem pretty hopeless right now when money gets tight. Some people, like I said earlier, estranged from your family. Um, you might have children that are far from God. You might feel far from God. So then what does God want for us? He wants the same thing that he wanted from Mary. Not a virgin birth, but a simple faith. That faith like Mary. Simple faith that he will keep his word, because that's what he does. He always keeps his word in very unlikely and very unexpected. So return this evening for the rest of the story. <laughs> Let's bar it. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your perfect and preserved word that you promised to us in the scripture. Just as the promise of the coming Savior, we await his promised return in the future. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you fill us with faith, fill us with courage, like that of Mary, the chosen mother of our Savior, so that we would all be so willing to follow you when you call us to do the unlikely and the unexpected. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So our closing hymn for today is Go Tell It on the Mountain on page 251 in your hymnal, If You Could All Rise.
make his face shine on you and be gracious on you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Amen. Judy has an announcement for you. Please join us downstairs for some cake and coffee to honor Pastor Mark. This is his last day of preaching and we want to Here. celebrate here. Um, and thank you. So please come downstairs and join us. It's a great big cake. There's probably enough for everybody to take some home. Thank you. Thank you.